documentary by Alex Winter, The Deep Web, which will be released this spring, is trying to answer a question. Does the alternative Internet really pose a threat to the society? The director tells us that often it is being unjustly vilified. On a fundamental level in dealing with black markets, but also in terms of the way people communicate, who they are, anonymity online. Government, public idea of what the deep web is or what the dark, dark net is, um, is currently being demonized in a way that I think is both inaccurate and dangerous. Um, because these technologies are, are primarily used for extremely needed purposes, journalists, dissidents, government agents that need this you know, anonymity and privacy. At the heart of the documentary's narrative is the story of 29-year-old Ross Ulbricht, the man accused of being the Dread Pirate Roberts. Who is the Dread Pirate Roberts? The mastermind of the Silk Road website which sold narcotics online before being shut down in 2013. Ulbricht faces up to life in prison if found guilty of all charges. Uh, but Winter believes that the trial is about a lot more than Ross's personal freedom. We're actually facing some very dangerous precedent that could be set legally that impacts the way um, our data is uh, uh, located, seized, examined, uh, with or without warrants. This case has, has, has a magnitudinous effect on all of these different areas of American life, state level, federal level. It has magnitudinous effect on a global level in terms of uh, the, the, the desperate need for the, the sort of transparency and freedom of the Internet for the individual to have the right to privacy and anonymity online. There are people in China, in Africa, in Iran, there are people all over the world that need these technologies. There are questions about how exactly the authorities had obtained the evidence, as this has not been made clear yet. Moreover, during the pretrial hearings, the prosecution all but admitted the FBI hacked the Silk Road servers without a warrant. But you would not know that if you only followed mainstream news sources. You would think that the trial, which some believe to be one of the most important in the recent American history, is prompting all this media attention outside the federal courthouse in New York City. But these journalists are here for a different story, that of the corruption charges against a member of the New York City Assembly, Sheldon Silver. The Silk Road trial is barely getting any mentions at all. John Bush is among the few journalists covering the trial, raising eyebrows as to why the colleagues from the mainstream media are not present inside the courtroom. I've seen very little interest from the mainstream, NBC, New York Times, CNN, but there seems to be a considerable amount of this kind of alternative mainstream, uh, like Wired Magazine, uh, Business Times, for example, and... Uh, I think that this case has a lot of implications and the mainstream media may not want to touch it because they perhaps don't want to give attention to Bitcoin or these alternative technologies to educate the public about it. If people aren't paying attention, I strongly suggest that they start paying attention now because the outcome of this trial is going to affect everyone that uses the Internet. As the Silk Road trial is about to enter its fourth week, the question of whether Ross Ulbricht was the man the authorities accuse him of being is just as important to many as what will happen to online liberties if a man can be put behind bars based on evidence acquired through somewhat questionable means. And Alexei Yaroshevsky joins me now from New York. Alexei, I know you've been covering this thing for about three weeks now. Where are we at in the trial at this point? Well, at this point, it doesn't really look good for the defending team of uh, Ross Ulbricht. In fact, for the past week, uh, the uh, prosecution has been uh, providing a very strong evidence against uh, Ulbricht. Uh, particularly today, we saw um, uh, several snapshots of chats uh, on uh, the Silk Road uh, website, uh, which were uh, linked to the Gmail account of Ross Ulbricht in the period when he and his defending team claimed that he was no longer um, in charge of uh, the Silk Road website. Also, uh, they presented evidence of uh, bitcoins which were um, distributed to the Silk Road website and then they were transferred directly to Ross Ulbricht's account. According to the defending team, though, that still doesn't prove that Ross Ulbricht was on the other side of those transactions and chats, but um, many in the courtroom and the jour journalists and the family of Ross Ulbricht, they are quite dismayed by uh, this uh, kind of evidence. It's still, of course, a long way to go. We're expecting at least three more weeks of uh, this uh, trial, and there will be more uh, witnesses and more evidence uh, coming up. But the big question still remains uh, 
uh, what is the nature of the evidence which uh, the uh, authorities are presenting against Ross Ulbricht during this trial? The nature of the evidence is one question, but the other question is how did they obtain the evidence in the first place? And I know there are a lot of questions about that, how this was obtained, whether a warrant was used. Well, at any point the prosecution would be required to disclose that information, do you think? That is something Alex Swinter also hopes on. Uh, he told me, uh, that's the part which was not included in my report, that at some point the prosecution will have to explain how this evidence was obtained because during the pretrial sessions, as I've said, uh, the um, authorities pretty much confirmed that the, uh, the, the servers of the Silk Road trial were uh, seized without a warrant and this is something which is creating the biggest concern here like if this evidence came without, without a legitimate reason then uh, such cases can uh, be repeated in the future uh, so everyone is expecting some kind of explanation but uh, as of now this explanation has not come we are expecting of course a lot of interesting stuff at this trial to come uh, during the next week and the week after that when uh, defending a team will be presenting their witnesses at the trial well as you mentioned uh, in your story very little media coverage of this glad that you are covering this for us appreciate your work on it RT correspondent Alexei Yaroshevsky from New York thanks so much